Screw the B770, we've been waiting too long for that thing. How about you just give us an iGPU with just like double the amount of XE cores and uh, yeah, also make it have like 128 gigabytes of RAM and also make it portable. Does that suit your fancy? Well, I think it does for Intel because Intel is coming out with a successor to AMD's Strix Halo that I like to call Arc Halo. This thing is absolutely insane. We're talking about a bigger Intel Arc GPU than we've ever seen by order of magnitude of 2X, um, but it's in a integrated GPU form factor, all with supporting Nova Lake's new P and E core architecture. Guys, this thing is really exciting and it's going to beat Strix Halo and probably beat your wallet. Let's talk. Lake AX. You may be wondering what the heck is that? It is a mobile form factor, mobile chip of Nova Lake with 28 cores, kind of on the low side for Nova Lake as far as that comes. On uh, desktop, we saw that this thing's going to get 52 cores, so you know, 28, that's about half of what we'd actually see. However, this thing is not supposed to be some CPU powerhouse, while with 28 cores, it pretty much is. It's actually going to be geared towards AI bros. This is what I think, just like Strix Halo, you're gonna see this thing outfitted with 128, maybe even 256 gigabytes of LP DDR5X. And on this leak here, it actually says this uh, LP DDR5X can go up to past 10,000 mega transfers per second with a 256 bit bus, guys. So with that, I mean, 256 bit bus at 10,000 mega transfers per second, we're looking at 320 gigabytes of memory bandwidth on a integrated GPU solution. Absolutely insane. Just for reference, Strix Halo had 256 gigabytes of memory bandwidth, you know, 256 bit bus, 8,000 mega transfers per second, right? But this thing is bringing it up to the next level. Like I said, 28 cores, eight of those are P cores. I know we aren't getting any more than eight P cores on this thing, but honestly, I don't think we're gonna need it right now. And then 16 E cores and then four low power E cores, I guess, to try to keep power consumption somewhat reasonable on this thing. Next is the straight up star of the show. We're going right into it. I'm not trying to milk this video out for watch time. I am just passionate about these things. So guys, let's go ahead and get into it. 40 eight XE cores. Yeah, that's right, 48. And for reference, guys, the last iGPU we got from Intel, I mean, their best iGPU, Lunar Lake, is eight XE cores. So this is six times, yeah, I didn't stutter, six more XE cores than Lunar Lake. And not only this, guys, this isn't built on Battle Mage, not on XE2, but on XE3 or Celestial. So <laughs> not only are we getting six times the XE cores, but we're also gonna be getting a huge IPC uplift with these XE cores. Also for frame of reference, the B580 was 20 XE cores, all right? So this being over 2X more XE cores than the B580 that everyone loves. You know, the B580's on around the performance of a 4060. Well, this has over two times the performance, or not the performance, but the XE cores of that. And we'll actually get into performance in a minute here because Calculating performance for this thing is gonna be a little bit tricky. It's not as simple as plugging in the numbers and seeing, yeah, XE core scale because this is a mobile part with limited, limited memory bandwidth. So just to give you a frame of reference, I think it's best to uh, compare integrated GPU solution to an integrated GPU solution. So Lunar Lake with eight XE cores uh, is around the performance of a GTX 1650 to a GTX 1066 gigabyte, both discrete graphics cards. I have a Lunar Lake uh, 256V, 32 gigabytes, and yeah, I can confirm. And all the testing I've done, it's around the performance of both these cards. I've actually owned all three of those graphics cards, Lunar Lake GTX 1650, which was my first GPU, and then the GTX 1060, which I had in a mini PC for a while. So I'm actually very familiar with all those performance levels, and they're all around the same, actually. So that's where Lunar Lake's at. If we multiply that performance by six, you know, just assuming these XE cores scale linearly, we'll actually see RX and 7900 XT to RTX 4080 performance. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so you're telling me that 
this iGPU is gonna be on the performance of my discrete graphics card here that, that's literally bigger than my whole laptop. No, actually I'm not telling you that because this thing is not gonna scale linearly and this is not actually even assuming for any IPC increase in these XE cores and I think, you know, that uh, that's just gonna be a given here. Uh, it's also important to note that Lunar Lake is battle mage the same as the b580 but it clocks much lower my lunar lake laptop clocks to a max of 1950 megahertz on the gpu cores and you know i have a b580 now i forgot to tell you guys i actually picked one up switched my a770 out and i tested this thing and i was able to get it up to 3.1 gigahertz <laughs> you know we're given the benefit of doubt and clock speed and also an ipc for this uh, estimate here, we're assuming zero IPC and honestly 0% uh, clock speed increase. And I think that you know the clock speed on this thing is probably gonna be right around two gigahertz. They aren't gonna wanna push these XC cores to a very high clock speed because, well, it's just gonna take way too much power in a mobile form factor, I think. So yeah, do I think it's gonna be on the level of an RTX 4080 or 7900 XC? Heck no, guys, it's not. And in fact, you know, there's no way to actually accurately assess the performance of this thing right now. It's very early days for this GPU. And you know, this one guy, Raichu, that kind of leaked it, he's saying, I don't even think it's gonna come out. I think Intel's gonna can this thing like they do every other project, right? And well, I think you can all hope with me, hope to God this thing doesn't get canceled because it sounds like the ultimate giga chat of iGPUs, but Going right into my performance estimates, I'm estimating this thing on the low end to be around RTX 4070, you know, RTX 3080 performance. On the higher end, RTX 3090, maybe 3090 Ti, so around RTX 5070 performance. So in modern terms, RTX 4070 to RTX 5070 performance. And now, this is a big if, all right, guys? I'm not uh, including any IPC estimates here. I'm not including any uh, clock speed increases. All I'm assuming is there's going to be a huge degradation in performance from this measly 320 gigabytes of memory bandwidth, which is comparatively not a lot to these discrete desktop cards. And you know, I think it would only be at around 1080p you'd see this uh, scaling in performance. Now, guys, this is actually by no means a gaming iGPU. Just looking at the specs here, it's too much of a monster. Uh, I could see if Intel wanted to make some deal with Microsoft, just say like, hey, you have the best uh, gaming box, whatever, they would create a binned version of this, maybe with like 30 XE cores and uh, like 32 gigabytes of LP ddr 5 x whatever. But, you know, not with the full 48s and all the memory gonna, they're gonna deck this thing out with, it is 100% an AI product. Intel wants to position themselves as uh, someone that can actually run AI models and uh, what do they call it in, in inference yeah inference they don't <laughs> their ceo literally said they cannot compete in training ai models which was kind of uh, cringe to he see him say that but you know he's being truthful there they really can't nvidia has 99 percent market share there honestly amd can't compete there either um but what they're trying to do is to get into inference and actually running the tr already trained AI models and something like this with all the amount of RAM that it's gonna have and the GPU chops would be great at that. So if you had to give me one graphics card that I'd just have to pin this down and say, this is what this performance is gonna be, I'm gonna say RTX 4070 discrete, not mobile, because people Strix Halo was said to be the Ryzen 4070, right? Um, it was mobile 4070 performance, which is actually only RX 5700 XT discrete. If you go back and look at my original Strix Halo video, that's exactly where I said the performance would lie, or it's around RTX 3060 uh, desktop discrete performance, right? Now, I'm thinking this one's gonna be around RTX 4070. That's what I'm gonna say it's at. It could go up to you know RTX 5070. But even higher than that, if everything scales, but honestly, I think the memory bandwidth on this thing is gonna be holding it back like crazy. And also, we don't know what power consumption is gonna look like that could also hold it back. But like I said, guys, this is just my thoughts. It's by no means the end all be all. And this thing might not even come out, but let me know what you think of a ginormous, mega sized APU that could actually destroy your discrete graphics card that's guzzling watts in your system right now. Guys, let me know. Silicon stage, the master Sign. attack. Ever review every spec he's on deck from GPUs to CPUs. He knows it all. No question too big, no detail too small. He's got the knowledge, he's got the skill. When he drops his take, the haters stand still. Fanboy.
boys can cry, but they can't deny. Silicon takes truth, cuts through the lie.